What's good, YouTube? It's that fantasy guy back with you with another video. And I wanted to go over the rookies again, but I wanted to go over in a redraft perspective. You know, I wanted to get my top 10 rookies who would actually, you know, do a little something this year that would actually have a productive season this upcoming season. Um, well, who I think would have a productive season. So, the list will may 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 look off to you, but it's the rookies who have a best chance to play to uh you know to to opportunity to be relevant and you know have an opportunity to get work on their teams. Let's get it. So number ten, you didn't hear me talk about this guy, Joshua Kelly, and as I just said before. He's going to come into the backfield and become the biggest back in the backfield and the one with the most draft capital. And he was only drafted in the fourth round. But guess what? Justin Jefferson was drafted in the seventh round and Eckler would undraft it. He's going to have the most draft capital in the backfield. Now, that's crazy. Now, you know, you still got to respect Eckler because he was given another contract, but there's a chance that Joshua Kelly can get a lot of work his first season. And I, I've been on the Josh Kelly train, you know. Don't fail me, Josh Kelly. <laughs> Look, I was going to save this for another video, but I know there's a lot of Eckler fans. But guess what? Eckler. Eckler got all of them targets from Rivers, and Rivers is gone. So... You don't know what Tyrod Taylor going to do. I don't remember him being um, keen to throwing the ball to the running back. You don't know what Herbert going to do. But I would trust Herbert to distribute the ball more than I would trust Tyrod Taylor. Tyrod Taylor going to run it himself if he get in trouble. Not going to dump it to the running back. So there's a lot of things that um going to go against uh, Eckler having a year he had last year so i'm not putting my faith in eckler i would not own eckler anywhere so my number nine Keyshawn vaughn yeah i know i know ronald jones is a decent running back when it comes to running the ball he just sucks at blocking what may get him in trouble so um as i said in the last video i made even he let an undrafted small running back beat him out for playing time in a number of a number of times his first season and in his second season. Also, oh, there's a chance that Vaughn get in there and beat him out his job and get significant amount of playing time. That's why he's being drafted kind of high in a rookie drafts. And, you know, you got some people that agree with it, some people don't. I mean, sometimes you have to take chances. You know, it's not a conservative um, pick. You know, if, if you believe, if you, if you believe, in, if you believe in being risk adverse, pass. Because <laughs> there's a chance that that man might just be a simple backup and not get any playing time. But in the late rounds, why not pick him up? I'm just saying. Because you're going to be picking them up late rounds in a redraft. All of this is a dart. Throw it. Throw the dart, damn it. <laughs> Number eight, J.K. Dobbins. A lot of people might be like, eight. Look, look. Mark Ingram is still there. Please don't disrespect Mark Ingram. Uh, there is going to be a split backfield. I can't see them just giving the reins to... J.K. Dobbin, I think Mark Ingram probably is a captain in that damn locker room. I know he's a, a, a one of the head figures. He is a veteran. He handles his business. I can't see them just giving the reins to J Dobbins immediately this season. I think he is a great dynasty ad because I think he's going to handle his business when he do get that role, which would probably be next season. Unless Mark Ingram get uh, injured, and I'm just, I don't bet on injuries. All right, number seven is Michael Pittman, my guy. Uh, I've been trying to get him everywhere in Dynasty. People are starting to buy into the hype, so I'm not getting him for any deals anymore. But 
he has uh, a great opportunity to get on the field immediately. He is better than Paris Campbell. The only problem when it comes to putting receivers on this list is because of OTAs, training cap. This is going to be short. People, they seem like players are going to get just thrusted into playing. And wide receivers need to um, get that them reps in with the quarterback. And I believe, you know, all wide receivers are going to be behind on the eight ball. Otherwise, I would put Pittman high on this list. But this way he falls. It is what it is. Number six is Justin Jefferson. And that's because after Adam Dillon, who is there in front of him? Uh, Ola B.C. Johnson? A seventh round pick, but as I told you, as I said, you know, uh, a rapport is needed to be um, built between the quarterback and wide receiver, and he's gonna be behind on the eight ball with that. So, all of Beast Johnson might be a deep sleeper. You can get him for practically nothing. Just saying, but. We talk about rookies, so this is my number six. Number five is an easy one, Joe Burrow. You know this man going to be starting from the day one. So automatically put him in your lineup. But when it comes to rookie quarterbacks, you really can't trust him since he's not one of these mobile quarterbacks that's just going to break the mold and come out, you know, <laughs> really, really acting a fool in the league. So I don't think he's going to surprise anyone. So I got him at number five because he's directly, you know, um, going to be in control of this definitely, and he's going to have immediate production. But when it comes to comparing him to the other quarterbacks, it's not going to be much production. You feel me? So Zach Moss should definitely get the goal line touches whenever Josh Allen and not stealing him from him and running him in his goddamn self. Number four is Zach Moss. I've been getting a lot of Zach Moss because no one else likes him. <laughs> Uh, you know, he's been getting a lot of comparisons to David Montgomery. I personally did not have, I did not like David Montgomery whatsoever when um, I uh, researched him as a prospect coming out. I like Moss better. Now, I had an argument with somebody online that was telling me, David Montgomery is way better than Zach Moss. I'm like, okay, buddy, slow down. Like, you know. I think personally think Zach Moss, if he would have been put on the Chicago Bears, would have did a lot better, but that's me. But I believe that he's gonna beat out Singletary. I know there's a lot of Singletary fans. Y'all, y'all wolf, y'all, y'all wolf, wolf, y'all some uh Singletary, but I believe, you know, he's gonna come in and take on um, carries that Frank Gore had, and he's a bigger back, so I Number three is Acres. Now, I don't really like to trust the Los Angeles Rams because they went, you know, they, you know, moved up to draft uh, Henderson last year and he didn't play a liquor time. So we're putting faith in the Rams this time with this pick. Acres should be the lead running back on the Rams. You know, who has potential to have a high power offense was only two years removed from going to the champion, uh, the Super Bowl. So I think Akers can go go crazy, you know, and even though he's going last in Dynasty on the lower tier because he's one of the lower prospects when compared to the other rookie running back, he does have the opportunity to play immediately. Um, so he's, he's ranked a little higher than the other rookie running backs. Now, who y'all think I'm going to pick here? Because it's got to be one or two people. You know who's going to be one or two. Let's get it. I'm just going to go ahead and put C-E-H here. I think he's definitely going to get some work, but I think it's going to be a split backfield. And, man, don't just disrespect Damian Williams. The man should have won the Super Bowl MVP. He should have won. He went crazy. He went crazy in the Super Bowl. He should have won the Super Bowl MVP, and he's going to still be there getting work. I, you know, I think um, CEH is going to be productive this year, but um, I don't know if he's just going to take the lead 
running back road immediately. I definitely don't think that's going to happen. Maybe by the end of the year, definitely if um, Damian Williams get injured. Um, but I don't think this the year for him to go crazy. I think that's the next year, you know, when he really grab reins of the backfield. You feel me? Number one. <laughs> Number one, JT. Jonathan Taylor. I think it's no reason for Jonathan Taylor not to immediately grab reins of the backfield because what did you draft him for? Marlon Mack not better than Jonathan Taylor? Stop playing games, people. So he should immediately get, get that work. He behind a great offensive line. Oh, um, they say maybe the work will be split, but I don't care if the work split or not. If he's getting at least 16 touches, let him, he go, he go do his thug dizzle. You feel me? He go do his thug dizzle. Plus you have uh, a new quarterback. Um, if, if, Lord Jesus, if Rivers is dumping off to Jonathan Taylor, Woo! It's going down, man. You, you we going to come imagine what kind of production Jonathan Taylor going to have and it's and the stock is going to rise sky high in dynasty league. So, um, hey, that is the best case scenario. Might not happen like that, but if this man can get him 15, 16, 17 touches, I'm on board. You know, I'm on board of that. You know, he should, he should, he should get more. But, you know, I'm thinking, I'm trying to think low scale. I just can't imagine him backing up Marlon Mack. Stop it. Anyway, that's my top 10 people. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video. I'm out.